Hello, this is Milton, and in this session, I will talk about how SAP Cloud Connector works behind the scenes. Uh, you might have heard that SAP Cloud Connector acts as a reverse invoke proxy between the on-premise systems and the SAP Cloud Platform. So what is a reverse invoke proxy? So let's start with the basics first. Uh, so let's start with proxy server. Proxy server, or more specifically, the forward proxy server is a server it can be a physical server or a virtual server that acts as a middleman. The requests from the client machines are routed through the proxy server. The proxy in turn makes the request on behalf of the client to the server. So some of the advantages of using a proxy server are it anonymizes your IP address, it does caching thereby improving speed and performance, it saves bandwidth and also monitors traffic. Now let's go to the reverse proxy server. So the reverse proxy server acts on behalf of the server. So it's kind of the other way around. So it sits in front of the backend servers and handles the client request by forwarding the request to the appropriate servers. So the advantage here is it hides the origin of the backend servers. It mitigates uh, denial of service distribution, denial of service attacks. It does SSL termination, uh, thereby offloading load on the backend servers. It can do some caching as well. Uh, there are other advantages of using a reverse proxy server, uh, but let's not go into that. Uh, so now let's talk about um, reverse invoke proxy. Uh, to talk about reverse invoke proxy, uh, let's understand some of the firewall basics first. So here we have a client, and then we have a firewall in the middle, and then the server is on the other side of the firewall. Uh, so the client makes an HTTP request on port 80, and that request goes through the firewall to the to the server and then the server responds back with an HTTP response to the client. So the, now the question is uh, what ports on the firewall should I open for this uh, traffic to go back and forth? Uh, so the answer is you only need to open port 80 outbound on this firewall. There is no need uh, no reason to open port 80 inbound on this firewall. So you may be wondering, wait, the server is sending the HTTP response back to the client, so how does the firewall allow it? So you need to understand the concept of inbound and outbound. So the it only refers to the direction of the initial connection. So in this case, the client made the initial request, so the outbound port 80 needs to be open on the firewall. It does not refer to the actual direction of the data flow. So having understood this, now we can take a stab at reverse invoke. So here again, we have the client. The client, we have the firewall. The client makes an HTTP request to the server. And then the server responds back with an HTTP response. So port 80 outbound on the firewall is open. But here, we keep the connection open all the time. So the client has initiated the connection, but this connection is kept open all the time. So that's why we use the word invoke. Uh, the client invoked the connection and the connection is kept open all the time. Now, because the connection is open all the time, now the server at any given time can make a request to the client. So the roles are kind of reversed here. So the client initially made the connection first, and the server responded back, and the connection is kept open all the time. Now the server, now that this connection is open all the time, can make a request on this existing connection to the client. Uh, again, there is no inbound port on the firewall that needs to be open because this uh, connection is already open. Um, but the rules are a little bit reversed because now the server, which is on the right-hand side, can make a request to the client, which is on the left-hand side. So I'm going to change the naming a little bit. So here, the left-hand side now is the server for me because the distinction between server and client is now blurry because of that. Uh, so we have the firewall, and it is the server 
uh, or the machine on the left hand side let's put let's call it the machine on the left hand side that initially makes the request to the machine on the right hand side through the firewall uh, let's say this is a https connection at this time so port 443 needs to be open on this firewall outbound port port 443 outbound needs to be open on this firewall uh, the request reaches uh, the machine on the right hand side the machine on the right hand side responds and now this this uh, connection is kept open uh, all the time so now the machine on the right hand side can become the client and make requests to the machine on the left hand side which now becomes the server and the server just like a reverse proxy server would uh, behave, uh, can talk to the resource servers or the backend servers and, uh, and handle the client request. So the server now acts just like a reverse proxy server, uh, so, but it's a reverse, reverse invoke proxy because this is the one that initiated the connection, hence the name revoke, reverse invoke proxy. So this uh, server behaves just like a reverse proxy, uh, but this is the one that initiated the connection, so it's a reverse invoke proxy. So it acts like a reverse invoke proxy. So how does SAP Cloud Connector uh, fit into this equation? So we have the SAP Cloud Connector on the left-hand side. It makes a request, an HTTPS request to the uh, SAP Cloud Platform, and this connection is kept open all the time. So port 443 outbound on the firewall needs to be open. Most companies have port 443 open on the firewall anyway, so really we're not making any changes to the firewall at all. Uh, port 443 is always open on most companies' uh, firewall, so basically no modifications to the firewall is required. The SAP Cloud Connector makes a request, and uh, this connection is kept open all the time. And the SAP Cloud Connector now acts as a reverse invoke proxy because the SAP Cloud Platform can make requests to the Cloud Connector at any given time. And the SAP Cloud Connector can talk to the backend servers and respond to that request. Now, the SAP Cloud Connector can either reside on the DMZ and or it can reside on the internal network as well so it doesn't matter based on the company's decision uh, it can reside in any of those locations uh, it needs to have the prerequisites are it needs to be able to talk to sap cloud platform uh, so port 443 is always open on most uh, companies firewall so it's, uh, no modifications on the firewall is required and it needs to be able to talk to the backend resources to handle the request from the SAP Cloud Platform. A uh, key thing to understand is no inbound port needs to be open for this to work. Yeah, and like I said, uh, uh, the request was initially made on port 443, so the firewall outbound port 443 needs to be open, which is open in most cases. So this is the TechEd slide. Uh, so we have all the on-premise uh, data resources on the left-hand side, and they all connect to the SAP Cloud Connector. So Cloud Connector needs to be able to talk to all of them. And on the right-hand side, we have the Cloud Application Services, and they all uh, part of the SAP Cloud Platform Connectivity Service and the secure TLS connection is established between the cloud connector and the SAP cloud platform on port 443 initiated by the SAP cloud connector. Uh, so no inbound port needs to be open on the firewall and this is how the SAP cloud connector works. So key capabilities, no changes in the firewall required. Uh, so you have fine-grained access control of resources. So the SAP Cloud Connector talks to the internal resources like the ABAP server and so on, uh, but it can have fine-grained control. So you can only expose what needs to be exposed on these ABAP servers. And uh, so you can access your cloud databases as well. 
you can it has support for multiple protocols and you can also securely propagate cloud user identity as well okay so there are various options and how to connect the cloud connector with the sap cloud platform but i'm not going to go into that um, so i'll stop here if you have any questions uh, please feel free to contact me thank you